Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Pre-Market News and Views by In The Money Stocks. Today is Friday, December 20th, 2013. Thank you all for tuning in. Let's jump right into the charts here. There's a lot to cover today. Uh, this morning, the S&P 500 E-mini futures are trading higher by about four points to 18.06 per contract. You can see a quick little spike right here in the marketplace. That was when the uh, final GDP revision was announced. It looks like today uh, the GDP uh, was revised up to 4.1%. So this is quite a bit of a surprise. Uh, I believe everybody was expecting 3.4, 3.6%, and we're getting a number of 4.1%. Whether you believe it or not, uh, it doesn't really matter. That's the number that's out, and uh, we'll see how the market reacts from it. Uh, but right now, futures are trading higher by about four points. Um, to around the 1806 level, so we'll see where that goes. Um, there's a lot to talk about today before we even get into uh, markets any further here. One, I want to go into Asia last night, and uh, the Shanghai Composite really tumbled and crumbled last night, and this is pretty alarming. I think that um, a lot of traders really should take note of this. Um, it may not come back to haunt us at the moment, but ultimately, something's going on there, and uh, we'll talk about that in just a second. I just want to show you the chart here. So China last night has really been on a free fall, really, ever since early December. And you could see last night going into a big double bottom here at around the 2000 level. Um, again, I, I think this actually can go lower over time. It may hold up over the next couple of weeks or so, that double bottom. But that is not a pretty chart <clears throat> any way you slice it or dice it. Uh, it looks like last night, uh, Chinese interbank interest rates, they spiked. Um, this has been happening from time to time. This has happened. And the central bank, uh, the People's Bank of China, had to uh, inject cash into the system. And um, again, it seems like the cure for everything is just inject money into the system. Our Federal Reserve does it. The, the Bank of Japan does it. The People's Bank of China does it. All the central banks around the world, Bank of England, Everybody just thinks the cure for everything, the cough syrup, is really just to uh, uh, push cash right into the system, and that cures all the problems. So, again, um, this stock market has given us a warning, uh, possibly for 2014 already, um, but we'll watch it and we'll see what happens. But I just think it is worth noting. Now, other markets in Asia last night weren't terrible. You did have um, the Nikkei 225 index finish basically flat. The Bombay Sensex Index, which is India, was up about 1.7%. So if the U.S. markets are strong today, traders can watch for the watch a lot of the Indian ADRs. They may catch a bid um, today. So again, India was up 1.79%. That's a decent move. So we'll see how that uh, plays out. But um, very, very important to watch these Asian markets each and every night. Now, when we take a look at the European markets today, not really a big deal. Europe is holding up pretty well. German DAX up four-tenths of 1%. Uh, that's pretty much it. The FTSE 100, remember England can print their own money. That's the uh, London market. That is up about two-tenths of 1%. So there's really no panic or fear out here whatsoever. Uh, the markets seem to be pretty uh, calm so far in Europe as well as in the United States. Uh, let's take a look at, oh, there is some other news I want to just talk about. S&P looks like they did cut the European Union's credit rating um, to AA from AAA. So again, um, or AA plus, uh, either way, just cut a notch, not a big deal. But uh, that was cut, so a little bit of a surprise there. Uh, let's take a look at some stocks in the news today. Um, we're going to start off with CarMax. KMX is the ticker symbol. Uh, the stock is getting um, hit pretty good. Let's just go to the 10-minute chart. You'll see it. So the stock closed at around $53 yesterday. It is now trading at $50.50. I will have some uh, morning gap levels for CarMax. They'll be posted up in the chat room. But um, we'll look for a little bit of a support area somewhere uh, a little bit lower from here. But um, nonetheless, less CarMax is on the radar today. This stock is getting hit pretty sharply. Uh, another stock we'll be looking at today um, on a scalp basis will be Walgreens. So Walgreens, um, which was, was up nicely uh, earlier today when I first looked at it. Now it has rolled over. That's trading down to around $55.75. I believe the company had earnings today. I don't know what the earnings are. Honestly, I don't even care. I just care about the, the reaction in the marketplace um, when we have a stock like this. A level I see for Walgreens, if it does fall further, 
would probably be around $53.85. I'm not sure it's going to get down there, but if it does, around $53.85, that's a spot where I think traders can step in for an intraday scalp play. So keep Walgreens on the radar. There is a pretty good level around that $53.85 area. Uh, let's take a look at Red Hat. Red Hat is having a huge move. The stock closed at $49 yesterday. I don't know the news, but I, I will check it out. I will have a gap play for this on a, a resistance point. Um, if it does trade up to my level, uh, one thing I will say is that the stock is very, very overbought. Do not chase Red Hat here no matter what. I don't know what the news is for Red Hat, but I do know one thing. Um, stock up this high, you don't want it. In fact, you'd most likely look to short it if you could. Um, but right now, Red Hat uh, really with a, with a huge, huge move. Um, definitely want you want to respect it. Um, and uh, we'll have some resistance points for it a little bit higher. Take a look at T-Mobile. I want to talk about that one real quick. The stock is trading above $30 a share today. I had a huge move yesterday on Chatter that Sprint is going to make a buyout offer. We'll see if that is the case. Either way, just a tremendous, tremendous move. When I calculated it out today, the stock actually has more upside in the card. So you want to really be careful with shorting or trying to get in front of T-Mobile. I would not do that. It has upside to around the $32 area in the near term. Hard to see where a bid would come in above that level, but I guess it is always possible. If somebody wants something, they're willing to pay up for it a little bit more. But either way, um, do not get in front of T-Mobile, whether it comes down or not. It's just too dangerous to try to short that. Um, and the stock with the bigger time frame momentums, uh, momentum indicators that I use uh, looking at price and time tells me the stock can get up to 31 dollars to $32. So again, good move on T-Mobile this morning. Let's take a look at oil this morning. Oil is trading lower by about $0.20 cents, um, to around $98.84 a barrel. Uh, I don't know how much we could make out of oil. Yesterday, uh, oil did trade up pretty decently. Uh, I guess there could be a little bit more upside with the holidays upon us. It's very, very difficult to try to short oil outside of a scalp basis. Swing trading on the short side is very, very tough um, when you when you look at the energy complex ahead of a heavily heavily traveled holiday season, as well as cold weather. So again, um, looking at the charts, doesn't seem to be all that much upside left in oil. But uh, there could be a, just a, a little bit more than what it had yesterday. I would say on the USO, probably around 35.75, 35.80. Uh, that would probably be pretty good resistance if it does trade back up there. Let's take a look at gold. Gold yesterday was hammered to the downside. Today, gold, believe it or not, is trading down about a dollar forty. It was up about a buck or so about an hour ago. Now, um, being 8:45 in the morning, it is trading down about a dollar and a half right now to 11.92 per ounce. Um, let's take a look at the all-important GLD. And what you'll see here, it's trading at around 115.04. It closed at 114.82. So um, can't make too much out of gold right now. Um, we'll, we'll watch the charts. We'll see what happens. And um, we'll see if there are any real good pattern setups that uh, present themselves. Right now, I don't really see anything this morning that's telling me uh, gold is going higher or lower. And we'll just leave it at that. So it's going to be a busy, busy day today. It is quadruple witching, which means everything under the sun is expiring. Okay, you have four different classes expiring today. You'll also have a lot of uh, rebalancing uh, in a bunch of different indexes before the closing bell today. So again, um, the first two hours of the session will probably be fairly volatile. And then once we get into around 11, 30, 12 o'clock, the markets will probably calm down and then the final half hour of today's session could be somewhat volatile as you have a lot of rebalancing remember stocks like Facebook are going to go into the S&P 500 um, people that have not bought that yet will have to buy that um, and I mean mutual funds or people that are holding these these uh, different types of funds they'll have to add that equity and then you have a bunch of equities coming out of the Russell and some going in so you, you have a lot of rebalancing a lot of shuffling going on if you have not moved your futures contract over on the S&P 500 E-mini, the new contract is the H contract. So we are going from the Z to the H. 
All right, that brings us out to March. So you want to flip over your contract today. Make sure you do that also for the U.S. dollar index as well. All right, um, I think I pretty much covered everything I wanted to talk about today. I want to wish you all a great trading day, and I'll see everybody on the charts.